It's very easy to become overwhelmed by the complexity of Blender as a beginner, and there are many mistakes that can hold people back from progressing, so here are 5 common beginner mistakes to avoid. The first mistake many beginners make is when they are looking for a solution to a problem or question they have. This comes in the form of not knowing where to search for an answer, and also upon receiving the solution, not delving deeper in order to grow their knowledge. So where do you begin? The first line of searching that you will do will be through Google and YouTube, making sure to use keywords to find the solution, such as the software that you're using, so in our case, Blender, and what it is that you're wanting to make or find out. I usually phrase this as a question, as Google is able to interpret it as such and deliver the search results. Sometimes you may need to phrase it differently if searches are not appearing, but if it still does not provide fruitful it may best serve you to go into forums or discord servers as then you can ask the question directly to people who may hold the answer. A few discord servers I would recommend are as followed. Blender Gurus, Daniel Crafts, CG Geeks and Iridicium. Many popular Blender YouTubers have discords that they leave links to in their video description. But just say you did find your answer in a video. It would help your understanding if you began experimenting with what you've been shown and break it down so that you know what it is that is happening and how it is affecting each element as it's not always answered in some tutorials and even when it is it helps to still do it anyway as you may learn it better and find different use cases another mistake beginners make is by having distractions around them such as their phone this can cause you to either take frequent breaks or even stop you from progressing with your work whilst i'm not advocating removing your phone from your workspace completely as you may have your reasons to have it around, it is important to find out what distracts you and try to minimize that exposure. You can download apps on your phone which will lock certain apps for a set period of time and turning off certain app notifications might also be another solution. This will open you to be able to get into the flow state which is the ability to immerse yourself into your work and you may find that time flies by but whilst it's good to achieve the flow state, it's important to give yourself a break otherwise you'll overwork yourself and struggle to stay in it. My personal break lasts around 10 to 15 minutes, but it can vary for each person, and these breaks can be taken between each time you come out of the flow state. When you are modeling and creating your projects within Blender, it can easily be forgotten about saving your work, but it is crucial that you regularly save it in order to prevent losing your work, as you will never be able to predict if Blender is gonna crash. And if your PC is not as top of the line as others, it may crash more often, especially when undertaking certain actions. But one action that definitely works is subscribing and liking the video if you find it useful and you wanna see more content like this. But an action that can cause your PC to crash is applying a subdivision surface modifier as it would dramatically increase the topology, especially if it is already high in topology. Saving your work at certain intervals means that you will never have too much to redo if it does crash. If you forget to save regularly and it does crash, this may not be the end of the world as you can recover work using autosaves, but because of the frequency, it won't guarantee a large loss in work and don't rely on it. Also, you can create separate saves for your work if you wanna test a feature or something else without affecting your main project. Reference images are super important in the development process for creating models and animating your models, but I've seen many people try to freestyle without or with few images, so they end up relying more on memory and guesswork than real life. Even if your work is not grounded in reality, reference images can be used to guide your work and so take the time to collect the correct references to bring it to life. Reference images do not just need to be of a whole object, but the many parts that make it up so that you can get the correct level of detail. I personally use pure ref to collect my images and it allows you to overlay it on top of whatever you have open or you can add images directly into Blender, but this can make it a bit more tricky to work with, but everything is down to personal preference. The fifth and final mistake I see is that beginners avoid learning or creating their own shortcut. By learning them, you're able to increase your workflow and can help streamline your work so that you're not doing more than needed. Blender is great at allowing the user freedom with how they customize their shortcuts. When you open up these options, you can right click on the operations that you want to give the shortcut to. And even if it has a shortcut already, you can change it at will. Some of the most common shortcuts I use day in and day out is tab which takes you between object and edit mode quickly delete which will center on the selected model or topology and shift a 
which allows you to add things to your scene easily without having to go up top. There are many more to learn, but these should help you get started if you have not already. A key button I'm currently using is having the scene button on F5. And whilst at first you may not think it takes up a lot of time to go through the motions of selecting it without the shortcut, it all begins to add up over time. So learning them will become crucial. These are my thoughts. What are some of the common mistakes you see? And now go create something awesome.